Hi there, everybody. Welcome back. This is going to be another short practice session where we are going to practice polarity for molecules. So if you have not gone through the lectures on molecule polarity and electronegativity, I would encourage you to do so before you attempt this practice session. So what I have here are four different examples where we have molecules and your job is to determine whether the molecule is polar or nonpolar. And you should have some general reasoning behind this when you are assigning dipole vectors and things like that. So go ahead, pause the video like normal, uh, give it a try, and then you can go ahead and unpause it and we'll work through the solution in just a moment. So I will see you guys in just a minute. All right, everybody, welcome back. So hopefully you were able to complete this. For the first one, we're looking at electronegativity values to assign the partial charges. So remember delta, the symbol delta is how we decide to assign a partial positive or a partial negative charge. So here oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. And so in water, we would have a general flow for each of these bonds in this direction, which means that the molecule would be polar. And if I had to draw a single dipole vector for water, it would be converging right up through the middle of the oxygen here, right? So this would be polar when we take a look at the electronegativity setup. So what about this second one, ethanol, type of alcohol? Uh, we're looking at the carbon right here in the middle, though you could, uh, you could really look at any of these portionalities here. I tried to sort of make this the central portion of the molecule. Uh, but the important part is that you have an oxygen that's partially negative here, right? And in comparison to what's over here, you don't have any other oxygens. You have a carbon that's partially positive here. Uh, the hydrogens would be even more partially positive than that carbon is. So there's a general net flow of electrons towards the oxygen, and this hydrogen would be partially positive. So we're all sort of converging onto that single oxygen. So if I were to look at this, I would say that this is polar. Uh, we've got the, and I'm going to kind of draw these out to the side here, right? I've got the O and the H, and the dipole moment is in this direction for the molecule. It's going to be by the oxygen right here. Okay, uh, to make this even slightly more realistic, I suppose what you could do is you could put the oxygen here, keep the hydrogen bent, and keep the carbon, like the uh, CH2 over here, down this way, right? So that it would be like this and this. So if you went to draw the net dipole, and keep in mind there was a CH3 here, the net dipole would go up through the oxygen, just kind of how it did for the uh, water molecule over there. All right, carbon dioxide. Oxygen is partially negative in comparison to carbon, which is partially positive on the electronegativity scale. So we now have a pull going in this direction, and we have a pull going in this direction. And so equal and opposite pulls. Both of these are oxygens pulling on the electrons being shared with the carbon. When we have equal and opposite pulls, we do not have any polarity. So this would be a nonpolar molecule. Okay, and then finally, when we have uh, dichloromethane or methylene chloride, uh, it goes by both those terms, you have two chlorines, each of which would be the partially negative portion. Then you have the carbon, which would be partial positive compared to those chlorines, and then you'd have big partial positives on these hydrogens. So the general flow is headed to the carbon from the hydrogens, and then the electron property in the carbon is headed out to the chlorines. So yes, because these are not all chlorines, we have a mix of hydrogens and chlorines that are surrounding the carbon. This would be polar. And if I were to redraw it and take a look at this, here's the chlorines, here's the hydrogens. Okay, you would have a dipole moment headed in this direction. Um, sometimes you have to be careful with the way you're drawing these because if you're not following a general tetrahedral structure, you can get yourself in a situation where it may look like you have equal and opposite pull. So let me give you an example. Uh, if I had something like this, right? Same thing that I had before, 
except now I don't really show that tetrahedral structure. I'm showing 90 degrees in between. And a lot of people, you know, when we're going by quick, we'll, we'll write it out like this potentially. Uh, you have to be careful to not say, okay, well, this would head this way, and this would head this way, and so these would cancel one another out, and this would be nonpolar. That is incorrect, okay? So, no. This is because these are not completely opposite of one another. In a tetrahedral structure, you really have, right, you can have a hydrogen, but then you're going to have a chlorine, and you're going to have a hydrogen, and you're going to have a chlorine like this. And so you're really pulling this way. It looks equal and opposite, but what you really have is a dipole moment that's headed down through the middle. Uh, if you consider, it would be not actually down straight through the middle, but sort of over in back of the molecule. Um, you, ha you have to keep the tetrahedral structure in mind, which is basically this general tripod looking type structure where we have one in the back. We have one in the front, right? And then we have one that's sort of in the plane of the board like that. And so when I'm drawing this, if I have a chlorine here and I have a chlorine here, these guys between these would really have 109.5 degrees. They're not 180 degrees from one another. And so there really would be a dipole moment sort of headed back. It's, it's, it would actually be closer to where the hydrogen is in this direction. Okay, so just, just a point that I wanted to make in terms of the way these are being drawn, because sometimes you can kind of trick yourself based on the molecular geometry. So that is it for this practice session. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. Again, go back and review your um, hybridization, molecular geometry, and electronegativity if you're having any sorts of issues with this, because all of those can be important when we're dealing with this. Hopefully this was useful. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe if uh, you found this helpful. And I will see you guys for the next lesson. So thanks a lot for taking the time to learn with me.